So Tyler came out of the door and asked me, Dad, why is there so much poop right here all of a sudden? Bird poop. And I'm like, I don't know, something's roosting above there in the tree. I look up there, and let me show you what I see. There it is, a little screech owl. <laughs> and I was wondering why my cardinals were acting weird the last couple of days. They were sitting on the power line, squawking in the morning, sitting right on this power line, just squawking. I thought they were coming to say good morning to me and they were getting to know me, but nope, they're looking at that owl up in the tree. <laughs> I, I tied it all together through nature observation. Speaking of, there, there went the cardinal. Come here. Show yourself. Tell everyone. <laughs> tell everyone what you're doing. <laughs> he keeps running. <laughs> I'm trying to hold the camera at full zoom so it might be a little shaky. There's the owl. You're awesome. Hello, girl. What are you doing? Just hanging out in the water? Huh? <laughs> All right. Pretty male cardinal. There you go. Show them ladies your beautiful little uh, pouch there, whatever it is, a red pouch. <laughs> Lizards everywhere. Yeah, they're awesome. Oh, dang, I didn't even see you in that shot. Get out of there. <laughs> Cut. What's up guys, Rich at Rivera Urban Homestead. Had a good night last night. Anthony came over with his girlfriend Michelle. We barbecued, we ate all kinds of food, we conversated. It was a good time. Um, this morning I've just been hanging out, just looking at the birds. I got some video of some cardinals and stuff like that. Found that owl last night, which I'm right above. Hopefully it doesn't poop on me. But um, that owl is awesome. I always see him like on my bird feeder sometimes in the mornings when I come out to feed the chickens before work, but to now see where he's roosting and actually pinpoint it, that was cool. It's awesome. I just love exploring my my own little yard, man. There's so much stuff you can find in your yard if you just look hard enough, especially me with these big trees. There's a lot of stuff living around here that if you're not paying attention, you'll totally miss your own little ecosystem, but I like it. It's awesome. I always watch. I know I have birds up in that tree like I was talking the other day. That's uh, some blackbirds up there. Um, had some woodpeckers up here, but not anymore. Anyway, today I am going to rake up the yard right back here, and I have a lot of leaves that are down over here on my porch. I'm going to rake all that up throw it into the banana plants just to let them keep mulching their own food. Um, and then I want to show you, remember the clippings we took off the tomato plants that were dying? I want to show you how they're looking. We might need to repot some of them because some of them are starting to look pretty good. So that's second generation tomatoes off of the, the mother plant. Anyway, I'm going to get to raking. I will talk to you guys in a little bit. We're supposed to be getting rain around 2 o'clock, so I need to get it done. So let's do it. Alright, so it's nice and raked up. Hopefully we get some good rain to just really saturate it. It's been pretty dry. I kind of water it in the mornings before work, but... It needs a good rain.
All right, so let's go check out the tomato plants that I transplanted. The clippings, I should say. Look, I can't remember what they were. I'm sure one of them was a Cherokee purple. I think there, I don't know. I think there was a, definitely a yellow gooseberry in there. But those two are looking really good. These two I moved to a different location and um, they're starting to look better. So those four are good. This one here, I was just, that was more of an experiment, but look at the roots that started growing. I mean, that thing is amazing. Nothing really alive on it. Well, except this one little clipping here, I could probably take off if I wanted to, but I think I have enough with the four. But if I transplant those to bigger pots, I might take that clipping off and plant it in one of those and get it going. So hey guys, I just wanted to bring you in real quick and show you the Barbados cherry bush that we've been growing for about three seasons now, I think. Remember we bought it and it was just a little piece of a root, a root stock, and that was it. Planted it in here and now the base of it, it's a solid base. It has a real nice base and it's growing really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of prune it a little because I want to keep it in line with the ledge of Tyler's window. I don't want it going too high and it definitely is. Let me show you. As you can see it's going well over the ledge that I want it to be. So when I cut these tops, I'm just going to cut them to where they're in line with the ledge and get them maybe out of the back. They're bending in the back there. I don't want them doing that. With this stuff, we're going to clip off just like that. Now that keeps the window still open. And what that'll do now that we cut the tops off, it'll just start bushing out a little more. So every year this bush is getting a little bit bigger and can't wait till it starts producing cherries again this year. Last year we got more than the year before. And I'm expecting this year to get more than last year, so it's looking really good. What are you doing on my door? <laughs> okay, I'm looking around. You waiting for him to drop some seed for you? Are you chasing my birds? Don't lick it. Uh, gross. Are you licking my camera? Leave them birds alone. They're trying to just chill and eat. Take bird baths. No. Just gotta chase the birds away. What a butthead. Hi. <laughs> so I'm kind of hanging out, getting some sunshine. It's been cloudy all day. So sitting on the porch here, having a little sun. And I remembered, oh crap, I have to patch that hole. What am I going to do? How am I going to patch it? Right away it came to me. Christine, do you have a wine cork? <laughs> of course I do. Stuck it in there a little hammered it in with a rubber mallet and that'll seal it plenty enough to where no um, cockroaches can get in. I might do a little silicone around it. I just did that right now, temporarily. It's a nice little fix. Wine cork. <laughs> just keep reincorporating, right? Hello, little owl. Can I come up? Hello, little owl. Look, there's two owls. Oh, can I see? Can I see? Can I see? Can I see? Two little owls sitting in a tree. <laughs> Alright, guys, so that was pretty cool on my little bird wildlife uh, video this weekend. I don't know. Yesterday was kind of a bird day. I was just hanging out, checking out all the birds and stuff. The owls and shit like that. So it was all good. 
Anyway, um, this morning it is, man, it's hot and muggy. Still we didn't get those rains they were calling for. Now they're saying this afternoon possibly. Um, so it's cloud cover, so that humidity is just sitting on us. It's, it's, it's muggy out, but I do want to take our tomato clipping plants, transplant them into some five gallon buckets I have. So I'm going to just drill some holes in the buckets for good drainage. And then we're going to mix up a little bit of potting soil, peat moss, chicken compost, mix that all together, get them planted up. Hopefully we get a late summer harvesting of tomatoes off of these baby plants right now. So that'll be pretty cool. So let's go sweat for a minute. All right, everyone, I just got done mixing up my further, my potting soil. It's going to be miracle Grow Organics Potting Mix. It's going to be chicken compost from the chicken run. It also has equal parts peat moss. So peat moss, potting mix, chicken compost, along with an organic granular fertilizer I put in here. So as you see the bucket holes, I put holes all around the bottom and in here just for drainage. So let's just add some soil to the bottom. Pack it down. Grab one of our tomato plants, and remember, I'm going to cut all the bottom off. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look what I found. There's a little tomato on there. I never even saw that. Anyway, all this bottom stuff is coming off, though. Even the tomato. I'm going to get all that cut off. All that. And we'll leave those three right there. So we're going to bury all this stem. All right, let's do it. Oh yeah, nice roots. See how much roots those? And these are the clippings that we took off the dying plants. Set it down in there. Let me show you how much is going to be buried. Okay, so look down in there. So all this is going to get filled up. All that will be buried. So then, the whole bucket is going to be a root system once it grows out. Perfect, let's fill it up. One last thing, add some composted wood chips to the top of it. I'm not going to mix it into the soil. This is just going to be a mulch on top. It'll slowly decompose and feed the soil as it decomposes. So I like using wood chips. It keeps the moisture content better in the on the soil surface and keeps them roots a little cooler and also feeds. Okay, and of course I put tomato cages on these because we are going to start getting afternoon thunderstorms which have some good winds. I hope these aren't both the same tomato plant because these are doing really good. I still have these two, but they're still just like little, but we're going to keep working with them. But these two over here, I hope one of them is a Cherokee purple and one's like a yellow gooseberry because I really want Cherokee purple tomato plant. Okay, real quick, remember the one I just put in water and it had all the roots in it, the tomato clipping? That was part of a Cherokee purple. This is the only live piece on it, so I took it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip off this piece, that piece, these, here, and even that. And now I'm just going to bury this whole piece like this, right in the dirt, and leave this top. There's a little flower on this thing. We don't want flowers, so let's get them off. All right, let's go bury this. I know this is a Cherokee purple, so we'll just throw it in a little pot and get it going. Hopefully it recovers and does good. All right, guys, so that's a wrap for around here. The rest of the day I'm just going to kind of hang out, hopefully get to watch some thunderstorms, because I really love thunderstorms. Hey, what's up, butterfly?
butterflies are pretty cool too. I tell you what, man, they love my flowers. Anyway, I get so distracted when it comes to this area. There's always so many bees and butterflies around. There's another one back there. Just awesome. Anyway, so I got the uh, tomato plants all situated. I put them over here. Check it out. There, look at how clean this looks now. All them pots are gone for right now. I just set them up here. There's the little Cherokee purple that I just planted. So we got everyone set up, ready to go. So we're still rolling. This one's looking pretty, pretty yellow. I've been fertilizing it, but it hasn't recovered yet. Getting a couple little purple jalapenos though, back on the plants. Thai Hybrid has a bunch of peppers growing. He's doing good. The Jimmy Nardello is starting to get some green, new green growth up top there, so that's cool. Cherokee, or this is the Korean dark green. It has some peppers on it I gotta pick. And I should probably give it a little moisture, but it'll get some if it rains. If not, I'll water it tonight. Vacant bed at the moment. The other Cherokee purple that I had growing, it's getting some more peppers on it and some flowers, so doing good. I put my herbs back here. They seem to be doing better back here. They don't get as much sun. So that's it for now, guys. That is a wrap, but yeah, Thai hybrid, man. Champion. Rolling good. We'll see you all next weekend, guys. Have a good work week.